Good morning, Salem, and welcome to SHS Today. I'm Joey Hero, and joining me today at the news desk is Tala Kusleka. This week, we'll take a look at the cameras that CTE teachers have in their classrooms, the distance learning update, the fall play, best cars to buy as a high schooler, music reviews, and much more. First, Ariana Cabrera caught up with some Salem High School students and staff to get some insight on the new technology being used in the classrooms. Hi, I'm Ariana Cabrera from SHS Today, reporting from outside the TV and media control room at Salem High School. I am here today to discuss with some students and staff the new cameras the CTE classrooms were given to use for distance learning. So the cameras in the classroom have been, a, in, in my opinion, a great asset to provide uh, a synchronous learning environment for students who can't attend, um, knowing that with CTE we deal with Wyndham and Timberlane and Pinkerton. And, and, but I think in the end it, it, it makes the job of the teacher easier because they're not spending a lot of one-on-one -on -one time um, trying to keep catch kids up or provide missing assignments, things like that. Having these cameras were actually really helpful for CTE in particular because we were able to see what we were learning in class and kind of be able to see how it's applied to everything. They're able to take the camera and physically move it outside and you can like move the angles up and down side to side. It's got like a 360 degree motion that you can do with it. So at first I was uneasy about the cameras in the classroom uh, because I didn't know how well it would work. But as time has gone on, I've gotten used to it and I, I like having them. It's just more a learning curve than anything. Um, other than that, just remembering to move the camera wherever you go seems to be my biggest struggle. I was nervous too, and I would say you just got to jump into it. It's like anything, you got to dive into it, and you'll kind of learn trial and error as you go through. When she was doing the demos, we actually yeah. got to like see what, every, what product she was using and what you know, tools and everything. So. I think that we are only human, we're not robots, so we're always going to make mistakes, we're always going to forget something, we're always going to um, have a little mishap with technology, um, but once you dive into it, you really get more comfortable with the actual outcome and using it on a daily. Overall, students and staff alike were nervous to start the use of these advanced cameras in the classroom, but in the end, they were an excellent tool for distance learning. This is Ariana Cabrera from SHS Today, signing off. As a student that got to experience online learning with the new cameras, I can say that they greatly improved my learning experience. I agree. It definitely made me feel more involved. On that same note of distance learning, there were some concerns over what the future would be like here at Salem High School due to the virus. Zach, Matt, Ryan, and Mike caught up with some students to discuss on the topic. Hi, I'm Zach Merritt. Today, I will be interviewing two students from Salem High School to find out how they feel about learning in person. All right, how's getting help after school? Unless I have a remote teacher, it's pretty easy right now. It's just difficult to get the teachers that are online for help after school because they're not in person. How is moving from class to class? It can get a little bit crowded because I know they're having certain hallways go at certain times and certain classrooms, they're doing like the even odd numbers, but it's not awful, it, it's manageable. They dismiss even in all classes at separate times. How do your teachers feel about you using the bathroom during class or just going in the hall in general? They don't really seem to care. I mean, we have to scan out using like the QR codes that they have displayed in the classrooms, but it's not that bad. But they do have some of the bathrooms, like the single stalls, blocked off. How safe do you feel in school on a scale of 1 to 10? Hmm, 6 to 8 on a good day, on a bad day right now a three just because the cases are rising and we're still here full time. What's your stress level about school this year on a scale one to ten? Easily a ten because I'm a junior and I have a lot of hard classes without a managed time block. Do you want to switch to remote learning? Yes I do. I do want to switch to remote learning. I think it'll be better as a whole. No. Why? Um, because I won't do the work. Although extra precautions are in place to ensure students' safety, Salem High is still getting students involved in the school play. Joa, Gabby, and I talked to some students and staff who were involved in the making of their first virtual play. With COVID still at large, finding ways to safely carry out after-school activities is still a big concern. This year, the Performing Arts Department was forced to find a creative way to put on their fall show, which was War of the Worlds. The Theater Arts Department partnered with the TV and Media Department to put on a virtual play, which was live-streamed out to audiences. 
So the play was put together as a theater production in a TV studio, and uh, we used a lot of green screen for virtual backgrounds, and then we, we got really creative in the studio setting up um, some podiums and different curtain backdrops and things like that to sort of make it look as authentic as we could in this in this COVID age, I guess. Uh, you know, from a student perspective, I imagine it was a lot harder for them. They didn't have anybody to play off of. Usually in a play, you're, you're interacting more with the other person and, sh and doing it live. I would say overall, the play turned out better than expected. I think going in, hearing that the students were gonna shoot stuff in like Zoom fashion or on their own cell phones, versus what we were able to do here in studio the quality i watched it through yesterday for the first time all the way through and i thought it turned out awesome i don't know if i would like to direct a virtual production again uh it is not ideal you know it's not like the traditional kind of building up to this big performance um some people were done two weeks before the show technically goes up i i lack that uh face-to-face -face connection and that's what theater is it's supposed to be all about connection so like i feel like i was kind of like missing that i had a couple of rehearsals over zoom with the actors and then they would go in and shoot uh their scenes in the tv studio and uh that's how it was kind of all put together and then edited in some magical fashion and then sent off to the streaming company. But the advantages of using uh, video was you could do multiple takes, uh, but it was a true team effort and collaborative, and uh, I'm really proud of everyone involved. I would definitely call this a positive experience because we wouldn't have had this opportunity if we were not physically here in school. And with everything going on, being able to do it in the first place is really important. I started editing during the shooting time because I knew that it was gonna be a big project. I started just with like the rough cut, getting things in order, and then I went in with music and sound effects and visual effects. I think everything looks good. Um, production went well. We didn't really have that many issues, so things went well. It's definitely a little bit more difficult just because we didn't really have the experience of getting to work with each other in person, and we had to kind of figure things out for ourselves. Probably having to like figure out my character by myself because like Bouge is a remote teacher, so we really didn't get to see him in school even like, or at rehearsals because it was all on Zoom. My favorite part is the rehearsal process and getting to like make memories and stuff and that seemed to lack in this, like this year's show. Um, I don't know, I would think it's a positive experience just because it's something new that we haven't had to do before and we can like kind of add it to our resumes now that we've had to do a show remotely and it's definitely something that will come in handy if we ever have to do it again. With the success of the War of the Worlds, everybody is excited to see how future productions, including the upcoming musical, will be produced this year. Even though COVID has made it very challenging to have after-school activities such as theater, sports, and much more, Salem has found a safe way for everyone to still put the play on. Moving on to a different subject, Connor, Jared, and Toby are here with some music reviews. This week, they will be taking a look at After Hours by The Weeknd. where we talk about music albums while we're doing them. Today we are talking about After Hours by the weekend. We picked this one because it seems that it was so very old and after almost a year of release. Let's start with the most interesting part of this album, the production. The production has a very dark cinematic view on it, with powerful synth pads, reminiscent of synth wave music. Songs such as Blinding Lights and In Your Eyes sound very much like 80s new wave music. That said, there are some hit or miss parts of the album for me. Songs like Scared to Live felt way too generic in terms of lyrics that it felt odd and I think it's the weakest part of the album as well. It didn't fit the tone of the rest of it. However, aside from that, the album had some really good moments and most of the songs perfectly match the theme that the album cover set up for it. I would have to give this one a 9 out of 10, almost a perfect album, but had some minus slip ups here and there. And now we ask you, students of Salem High School, what kind of music you listen to on a segment out of the call. What type of music have you been listening to recently? I like a lot of pop music. What is your favorite kind of music? My favorite kind of music is either rap, classical, or rock. I like Say So, like Doja Cat. I like a lot of Doja Cat's music. 
I'm about, I listen to like all types of music, but recently it's been a lot of pop, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I really like the song Wop by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, that one is pretty popular. Mm -hmm. if have you listened to like any specific albums recently? Again, probably Hot Cake. Yeah. Take that, or like, I'm gonna go No, not recently. I've just been kind of listening to the same songs. One of the last questions we have on here is, what sort of mood is the music you listen to? Actually, every song I listen to, I kind of, like, if you take a song and then slow it down, it becomes sad. So I listen mm -hmm. to the original when I'm happy, and then when it slow it down, when I'm not feeling so yeah. good. Um, very upbeat, happy. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, Connor, Jared, and Toby. Now onto something many students will eventually experience, and that is driving. Angel and Nathan are going to discuss the best cars for high school students. Have you ever wondered what car to get as a high school student? Well, you're in luck. Here are what two high school students have to say. I do not have a car. I don't even have a license yet. Good for high school students. Um, I definitely say a lot of like more cheaper sedans that are like under around. I definitely say like probably around the three thousand to hundred dollar range. I don't know how cheap. Definitely like more like older Toyotas, like a Corolla or something along the lines of that, but. If there's one for high school, I'd probably go for something a little bit more like a old Mustang or whatever, but if I could pick any car in the world that I'd want, I'd want a vet or something, but that's kind of out of my price range. Um, I don't have a car yet, but I know my mom has a Ford Explorer and my dad has a Ford truck. I'd say probably like more either sports or more more newer market cars that recent kind of ones are like Toyota and like Honda and places like that because they seem more they seem more like sued for safety and they seem more sued for a proper way for students to get to high school. Um I don't have really anything specifically in mind, but I trying to think of like maybe some mid range car at least that I can at least get to school in on time and at least has a CD player inside of it so I could listen to the albums that I have bought in over the years. So somewhere on that lines, I guess. These high school students gave some good information. Wow, there's a lot more to buying a car than I thought. There certainly is. On the spookier side of things, Savannah, Emily, and Kayla dove into the world of the supernatural to get people's views on the eerie topic. Welcome to Sharing the Supernatural. I'm Savannah Danowitz. And I'm Kayla Nelson. Here we're going to talk about all things supernatural, everything from folklore to cryptids and urban legends to real ghost stories. Today we will be discussing the belief in the paranormal. We interviewed a few people from the building and got their thoughts on the subject. I believe. <laughs> um, somewhere in the middle. Um, in, like, I would say that I believe sometimes but then I wouldn't necessarily call myself a skeptic because anything's possible okay on Christmas Eve I believe my grandfather died like a long time ago but he had this like music box that like played like Christmas music and whatever so we put it above the the refrigerator and as soon as it struck as soon as it struck midnight at my house, the music box, without being touched at all, like, friggin', we just keep it up there, um, it just randomly started, like, it was randomly wound up. My mom just started spontaneously crying, which also was fun. But, <laughs> she was, we're convinced that it was him trying to communicate. Yes, um, my fiance used to live in a house and she swore it was haunted. And there was like one time that I was there and like I thought that she was behind me and I turned around and talked to her and no one was there and I was like, no, you were just right there, but she was totally like on the other side of the house. So, you know, if any place was haunted, that pro place probably was. It's like from the 17 or 1800s, this place um, that she used to live in. So I would say I think I've had experience with it, but <laughs> I don't know. I think it's possible. Can most people do it? 
Definitely not. I don't know. That's a, a, a good question, perhaps. But I think that um, if spirits exist, I think they kind of do it on their own terms. I don't believe that there are like people out there that can actually directly communicate with spirits. I kind of feel like that that whole, I'm skeptical of that side of things, the people that think that they can communicate with any spirit at any time. That's to, that would be that, okay, that, that means a spirit can be anywhere, any place, any time. I feel like spirits are tied to their locations, wherever they are. Um, I think in some ways, sure. I just don't think many of the ways we have can. Like, communicate with the dead, like Ouija boards, I don't really believe in those things because it's so it could so easily just be your friend messing with you from our interviews we could see that most people do believe in the paranormal to an extent we believe in the paranormal what about you <laughs> it's interesting hearing everyone's thoughts about the supernatural topic moving away from the supernatural side of things we have a, we have entertainment and celebrity news with myself grace and mila how was your halloween it was good how was yours great thank you for asking Speaking of Halloween, COVID definitely wasn't stopping celebrities from getting dressed up and having fun. So we picked out some celebrities and asked people which costume was the best. Some of our favorite Halloween costumes was uh, Cole Sprouse. He was the, the man in yellow hat from uh, Curious George. Kim Kardashian was the Tiger King. Bella Thorne was this cool fairy. Lizzo was the fly on Joe Biden's head. Uh, the Weeknd was the uh, nutty professor. Kris Jenner was... Jack from A Nightmare Before Christmas. Kylie Jenner and her gang uh, <laughs> was uh, the Power Rangers. Haley and Justin Bieber were Woody and a Barbie doll. <laughs> Dwayne Wade, his wife, and their youngest daughter were s'mores. Travis Scott was Batman. Here's how those interviews went. Uh, I'm going to say I like the first one. The Curious George one. <laughs> oh, so got Curious George here. I'll do this one a six at a time. What is it? Well, it's a yellow dude from Curious George, right? He just kind of looks weird. I personally liked Bella Thorne's Halloween costume the best because it looked like she put a lot of time and effort, especially into the makeup. I don't even know what this is. A fairy? I like the skeleton one. After asking about 40 Salem High School students, uh, the race was not very close. Uh, tied in second place, we had Travis Scott and Kim Kardashian. And then in first place was Cole Sprouse. Congratulations to our winner. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for a new episode of SHS Today. That's all we have for you this time. We'll see you next week, Salem. Stay safe.